The Windsor Court Hotel is a wonderful hotel filled with beautiful works of art, culinary delights, and breathtaking floral arrangements. Artis will introduce you to the artist who turned the Windsor Court into a true work of art. Uh, the Windsor Court uh, was built um, about 15 years ago, uh, as a matter of fact, I think in uh, April, and um, was built by um, a local uh, family uh, who at the time uh, also were uh, honorary ambassador to, um, uh, to the UK and that's why you find that the Windsor Court has so much to do and uh, uh, so many things that reflect um, uh, English tradition that obviously you can see throughout the hotel with, the, uh, uh, with all these wonderful paintings, uh, with this wonderful art as well as uh, obviously the name Windsor Court and also our wonderful uh, English afternoon tea that some people say it's as good if not better than back home in England. So that's why I guess uh, the uh, English tradition comes into uh, the hotel. Windsor Court uh, was then sold uh, to uh, Orient Express Hotels uh, and I guess to some degree continues the, uh, the English tradition uh, and uh, Orient Express bought the hotel about uh, seven years ago and uh, have continued to manage it uh, in sort of uh, with a European and, and, and more specifically uh, English flair to it. Start off in the lobby and we go around the lobby and we look at the various art in the lobby and, and then we go upstairs, we go in the grill room. If there aren't people dining in the grill room, we can actually go into the dining area of the grill room and look at things like the marquetry screen and a couple of the sculptures and paintings in the grill room. Then we go on down the hall and we look at the some of the Edward VIII objects, such as the needlepoint that he did. There's a piece of needlepoint by Edward VIII, also a painting by Edward VIII, of Edward VIII, not by him. And there's a model of Windsor Castle. There are interiors of Windsor Castle. Then we go along into the, some of the rooms that are used for parties, and there's the, the, the Palm Court has, it's a, a, the room is, is very interesting in itself. It's painted in faux marble, and then there, there's that room with the Van Dyke in it, then there's a room with the Neller paintings, then we go into the boardroom, then I ask the guests, do you have time? And if they have time, I take them up to the 23rd floor, and we have a great view of the surrounding area, and we also get to look at a few more paintings. We have landscapes, many landscapes. Um, most of our landscapes are based on Windsor Castle, so you could go through the hotel and check out the development of Windsor Castle over the years, which is interesting. And also, because it's all the same subject matter, you can see how landscapes have developed over the years. The first landscapes are very methodical and matter of fact. They are more or less like surveying tools. And the first artist we have, um, his work, Teniers, he's up on the 23rd floor, his work was done for surveying purposes. You wanted to see how hills and, and you know how things were laid out. Then the landscapes become more and more for pleasure. They become pictures, be objects of beauty, as, as we get closer and closer to our own time. Besides the landscapes, we have portraiture. We also have portrait, a couple of portraits which have landscapes in them. The portraiture is mostly of a political nature. It is showing you power figures. This portrait behind us of these two children, usually people come in and say, what beautiful children, but really this is a picture of power. These are children who embody potential power. This painting was done in an attempt to get this child back on the throne of England. However, you see he was painted to look like a little Louis XIV, and of course, at the time, the last thing the people of England wanted was another Louis XIV ruling over them. They, didn't, they had gotten rid of James II, who was Catholic. They didn't want a Catholic French king. And they would think of this child as being French when they saw this painting. This painting was done as an attempt, a, a propaganda attempt, but it failed. Now, of course, the artist did several versions of this, and, and of course, very few people actually saw this painting. But it didn't work as a propaganda piece that it was made, you know, as, as the way it was made. We have uh, sculptured portraits and we have painted portraits. Most of our works are oil on canvas that you'll see here.
Well, I think um, I think desserts have, have changed over the years, and they're going into much more height and dimension, and and you just have to think maybe height, because when you're sitting at a table and somebody brings a dessert by, you want people to actually notice it and see, you know, wow, look at that, and then they're going to order it. I think if you have something very flat, it will be uninteresting, and they won't, you know, they won't, it won't catch their eye. So you want to look for some height, and texture is really important because you want some crunch and soft. You don't want something that's all soft. So you have to look at different textures and different flavor combinations. That's as important as well because you know you just don't want one flavor in the plate, and you have to have your co combined flavors work well together. Oh, this this first dessert over here is an angel food cake with a strawberry couscous. I thought it was kind of a neat idea to make a sauce with couscous. So I'm using a lot of. Uh, a lot of strawberry puree with it. So it's kind of more like a sauce rather than just a couscous with a nice light angel food cake. And these are dried strawberries. You just dry them in a low oven. This over here is a milk chocolate parfait with a caramel bailey center. So we take and put a soft caramel center so when you open it that comes oozing out with a dark chocolate sauce and these white chocolate loops. And I love using chocolate work for garnishes, especially this kind of look. And this is a version of a banana cream tart. It's the, the sweet paste dough on the bottom and I have pastry cream flavored with a little banana liqueur. We caramelize the bananas and whipped cream on top with a little chocolate garnish. Uh, this is a macadamia nut financier cake with a caramel sauce and coconut ice cream, a little bit of a tropical dessert. This is a Napoleon with a white and black Russian ice cream with a cinnamon chocolate sauce, like a Mexican chocolate sauce. This is our classic creme brulee, which is on every menu. I take it, I never take it off, and I always keep it plain because I prefer my creme brulee plain rather than flavoring it. And this is a melon carpaccio. It's thinly sliced melon and cantaloupe with a cantaloupe sorbet with an orange twill and a mint sauce. I just love my job. I think I have the best job in the hotel. Um, I just love coming in and just starting to work with desserts and just thinking about desserts all day long and coming up with ideas and just coming and just getting, getting your hands right into it. The Windsor Court is an incredibly unique property. It has a standard and a style totally its own. Um, I've been fortunate to be the florist in-house for over seven years. I've been through several general managers and each general manager has his own personality and feel. And that usually becomes the feeling of the hotel. It's my job to interpret it and to create what this man or woman wants it to look like. Um, the current general manager, Hans Meyerson, um, is from Europe, prefers to have more of a mound, a big mass of one type of flower, as opposed to a huge arrangement of mixed flowers. And this is a style that, that he liked, and um, together we've created the look of the Windsor Court, which is the, the rose arrangement, the Oceana Rose. Um, ball of flowers, there's 150 in the lobby, there's 100 in this one and um, it's become a signature, both for the hotel and also for us. Oh, it's incredible. It's wonderful to be able to create something that people enjoy and appreciate. And we have people from all over the world that come through this lobby and come to this hotel. And one of the main things they'll say is, I've never seen anything like it. And that's why it's become such a signature. But it certainly is very rewarding to know that people appreciate what we create. We hope you enjoyed our visit to New Orleans. Art Is would like to give a special thanks to the New Orleans Arts Council for all of their help. Accommodations for this show on Art Is New Orleans was provided by the Windsor Court Hotel. Join us next week as we continue our journey into the world of the arts.